All right, let's take a look at the chisel brush in ZBrush. I'm going to show you what it is, why you'd want to use it, and how to create your own. So let's dive right in. I can see that this T-Rex, um, I'm using this as an example because I feel like I use the chisel brush a lot for this, okay, to add all these spikes, all these scales, and um, everything. So if I go here, I'm, I can see that here's my chisel brushes. I'm going to go to chisel creature, and I can see that there's 17 different choices here because there's a 17 in the corner. So if I go to this one here, like um, I can see it's tooth, but if I wanted to make it look like a horn, it doesn't really matter. If I click, you can see what it does. Okay, so it just it adds that um, spike to the character, and I can see all of that nice detail. It's kind of weird because I have scales on it, so I'd probably want to add it, be you know, pre-adding the scales. But um, really cool. The other thing that's neat about this is that it's not destroying my topology. Okay, if I look at my topology here, and if I bring this up, and now if I drag on this, I can see that my topology is not ruined. Okay, so in something like Dynamesh, where if we wanted to add stuff, it would ruin the topology, this is not ruining it. So it's kind of a non-destructive workflow. So I feel like that's really cool. Um, so I click, and then you can see that I can make this uh, kind of as big as I want because I have the drag rectangle on. And if I wanted, let's try what happens if I bring the intensity down. Okay, that's it's kind of, you can kind of see that it's, you know, kind of a smaller spike. So maybe I, I want some variation on my chisel um, and I don't want it to come all the way up. I can do that because you can see that even if I draw, draw small and it at 100%, it comes all the way up like that. So really cool way to get kind of these extra horns and kind of extra detail on there. Now, um, all of these scales were also produced with the chisel brush. And once again, I'm going to show you how to make anything you want as a chisel brush. But um, one thing that I also want to point out, by default, I think it comes on as drag rec as far as what it is. So that'll allow you to rotate it, kind of angle it, make it as the size that you want. But don't forget, you could also switch this to drag dot. And if you do that, now if you click, you, you create the shape, and then you can kind of like drag it to figure out where you want it. So you can kind of like test some different things, see what it would look like. Um, okay, so that's pretty cool. And the only thing with drag dot is that once it's established, you can't really change the size. So if you make it smaller to begin with, now if you drag it, you can see I'm dragging a smaller one. Okay, so that's kind of cool. But let's talk about how to create these. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch to the simple brush, control N to clear the canvas. Then I'm going to go to just uh, plain 3D, drag this in, hit edit. And I want to make this a poly mesh 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And now it's ready to kind of be worked. And I can see that here's its starting topology. So I'm going to go into geometry and I'm going to divide this. Okay, I can see that it's 4,000 polys. Um, if I divide a few more times, I can see that it's, you know, quarter million polys, uh, one million polys. I'm going to try to get it to roughly about four million. I think that's kind of a good starting point. Um, now I'm going to go to my regular brushes. And basically this is, if you want to think of it as, this is kind of my piece of paper, if you will, to create whatever I want. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of sculpt something real quick here. Um, and I could use any sculpting techniques that I want. So maybe I'm just going to kind of create like a, I don't know, like a nose or something like that. So I'm just going to kind of go like this. And, and this isn't obviously a sculpting tutorial, but I feel like hopefully enough to just kind of see the potential here. So... I'm going to go like this. And I could even go into my brush, kind of look at this from the side and say, you know what, I want to pull this out quite a bit. Okay. I can come out as far as I want. And let's put some nostrils on. Now, obviously, on the on the T-Rex, <laughs> this nose is probably not the, um, the most beneficial thing that I could be sculpting, but I think that it just illustrates the purpose um, pretty good. So now I could hold down shift, I could smooth it out. If I'm having trouble, I'm just going to go down a subdivision level or two and then kind of smooth it out. 
and I could add as much detail as I want. Um, now, let's say if you're making a horn or something, it's great to put in all that detail, like how it connects to the uh, geometry and all of that stuff, because you can use it over and over and over. So I feel like that's really a cool um, thing if you know that you're going to be using it quite a bit. Or if you're making a bunch of scales, you could do that um, as well. Now, the other thing, too, is that this plane doesn't have to stay flat. Right? So even if I push this in, even if I push this in like here, let's say, um, I'm going to just push it in a little bit like that and we'll see what happens. Okay, great. Now that I have my nose, um, now I'm going to go ahead and create my chisel brush. So to do that, I'm going to look at this dead on. Okay, so it's important that it's dead on. I'm going to also even turn off perspective. I don't know if that necessarily matters, but I want it to be just looking at it dead on. Then I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to say um, I want to create a chisel brush. So to do this, I'm going to go to like creature chisel. I have to be on a chisel brush so it knows it's going to be a chisel brush. But the thing is, is that I want to be careful that I don't override this brush. So I'm going to click on this brush. And then I'm going to go down here and say duplicate, okay, or clone. So now if I clone it, I can see that that brush, the creature chisel, is now down here, and that's it's currently active. So now if I accidentally override anything, I'm overriding the clone. Great. Now if I go into brush, create, um, I believe I can say create multi-alpha brush. Okay, so once again, I've got, uh, I want to make sure that I have this brush selected. And I can see that it is selected because it's nice and dark. And then if I go to brush, create alt, multi alpha brush, it's going to think a little bit. And now I can see that it worked because I can see it here, especially in the alpha. So if I click on this, um, let's see. And I can see that there's only a one there. That means it's only one thing. And I can, put it at drag rec. Let's go back to the T-Rex and take a look at what happened here. So now with that um, with that brush, now if I sculpt, I can see that there's the nose coming um, into the scene. Okay, and I can have as many noses as I want. And I can see it's even pushing down in there. Um, and if you're like, I wonder how elaborate I can get with these chisel brushes. Well, if you want an example of kind of how elaborate you can get. If we look at things, if I go to the existing chisel brushes, so here's, um, let me go to chisel 3D. If I click on that, I can see that even things like this that have like significant overhang, like I could sculpt that um, as elaborate as I want and make that a chisel brush. So here's some ears, like creature ears and eyes and noses. Um, there's also the chisel shapes, okay, just kind of like starting point of shapes. But I think it's good to look at what kind of ZBrush gives us as starting points to kind of give us ideas of what's possible. But now that you know how to create your own chisel brush, I feel like it kind of opens up the world to anything. Now going back here, if I go back to my uh, brush, let's say if I wanted to, um, I don't know, create another brush, okay? I could do this. This is kind of crazy. If I go back here, um, I'm just going to add my chisel brush onto this thing. And you can see that I'm, like, let's say if I was sculpting scales here, and I wanted to sculpt multiple scales. So I'd only have to sculpt a few scales, and then I could kind of go like this, and make just tons of scales, right? It's kind of creepy that I'm making noses. But now I made another, this could be another chisel brush. So what I could do is I could go here, and instead of having like hundreds of brushes, if I'm making a lot of chisel brushes, I can just go like this, um, brush, and I'm gonna say create multi-alpha brush. And now here it is, and now I can go back here, and I can see that I made, you know, the multi-alpha brush um, 
you know, a chisel brush from a chisel brush. Okay, so once again, I feel like I know that nose is kind of a creepy example, but you could you could be sculpting a horn, you could be sculpting a you know tooth, you could be sculpting a chipped um, horn, you know whatever you want, or scales and making those however you want, and then saving it as a chisel brush, and then just kind of drag and dropping it on your mesh. So hopefully that was helpful. Please make sure to leave comments below. Let me know what you think about this, and um, make sure to subscribe.